really like this stack is for somebody that wants to be a certified workaholic and doesn't care about some of the downsides that come with that. All right, so here is the stack. We have uh, paracetam, we have aniracetam, we have oxyracetam, pramiracetam, Nupept and Alpha GPC. And what makes this a neat nootropic stack is that you can argue that this stack is almost comparable, but obviously to a lesser extent to something like Adderall or Concerta. So this was the specific protocol that I followed like every single day. And I did cycle off maybe five weeks on, one week off, something like that. But I was taking them most days. It was Alpha GPC, 200 milligrams, Nupept, 15 milligrams, Paracetam 800 milligrams, aniracetam 500 milligrams, oxyracetam 800 milligrams, and pramiracetam 300 milligrams. This is Alpha GPC. I've made a comprehensive video on it, which I will link over here, where you can watch if you want to learn about everything as far as like the benefits, dosage, side effects. With the racetams that I'm going to talk about, you will need to replenish your choline stores. And the way you can do that is by eating like choline rich foods like egg yolks. But the more practical way is through supplementing with choline. And you can supplement with choline through either choline by tartrate, CDP choline, or alpha GPC. I just personally like alpha GPC. It, it seems to be more popular versus CDP choline, but I'm open to be wrong about that. CDP choline, I did try as well. I liked it. But when I started taking alpha GPC, I noticed my energy levels were higher throughout the whole course of the day and I was just likely to feel fatigue and burnt out. The reason why I buy this bad boy in the powder form is because this is something like, if you feel like a little bit fatigued, you'll notice just by taking a little bit of it, like a little amount, you're able to just feel like a little bit energized, you feel somewhat refreshed. Sometimes I like taking more of it pre-workout as it has evidence showing that it improves things like your aerobic capacity, your growth hormone. A lot of people report being able to like push more weight while using Alpha GPC. Great stuff, both physical and mental benefits. You will just feel sharper throughout the whole day and really no bad side effects you should be concerned about. Maybe like 10% of people report a bit of brain fog or bad mood with it, but it's not too common. Here's a visual of what the powder looks like. I would recommend you don't get like one drop of water in, otherwise you get like these, you know, like these alpha GPC clumps which we don't want. But yeah, it uh, really doesn't taste too bad. And you can get one of these like uh, measuring spoons where it's like, this is one teaspoon, this is a uh, half a teaspoon. Let's talk about process time. In my stack, it was 800 milligrams three times per day, once in the morning, once in the early afternoon, and once in the late afternoon. Press time, it's a funny nootropic. Like most people won't notice it working. It's not like a game changer in that. It will change your state immediately with taking it. People don't often notice it working after two months or so. I didn't notice it the first two or three cycles. I was a student when I initially started using this stuff, uh, but it was very clear that throughout my semester, my memory was a lot better. And then when I introduced it as a full-time real estate agent, I was able to notice I was just sharper throughout the course of the day. For time and some of the other RAS times, they're a little bit funny in that you probably won't notice them working. Again, this is one benefit of being in like a commission-based sales job, because if I wasn't, I probably wouldn't be able to tell if the stuff was working. Um, like, believe me, it took a long time to tell if Frost time was doing anything. But now it's very clear that like similar to Alpha GPC, you feel much sharper when you're on it and it helps you with your mood, it helps you with your energy levels. You'll find yourself like more motivated, like excited to kind of bounce out of bed and wake up and get after your goals. It's similar to Alpha GPC, just a different texture and like a different taste. And I wouldn't recommend you put it in the fridge or somewhere too cold as it will just get clumpy and kind of hard. Like even now I'm shaking this stuff. It's like rock solid. It's a neat nootropic. It's been around for a really long time and it's where people generally start when it comes to nootropics. Kind of like with bodybuilding, people start with the supplement creatine. That's kind of how press time is. Um, but press time, although there's not much research for people in their 20s, their 30s showing its effectiveness, I found it's really helpful to make me get out of my comfort zone, make me more ambitious. And it's a important part of my nootropic stack. But quite honestly, out of the six nootropics, if you don't feel anything from one of them, it would probably be this one right here. So if you're going to use this, I will warn you, like, just give it some time, maybe 90 days or so, and then you can be objective as far as whether or not you should keep it in your nootropic stack. Next nootropic would be oxyracetam. What makes this different than the other racetams like prastam, pramiracetam, or aniracetam? This is slightly stimulating, but it's an interesting stimulating feel that I cannot find across any other nootropic. I can't find it from like coffee, from green tea, from something like theocrine or yohimbine or ephedrine. 
it's almost like you just feel this immediate effect of your priorities coming top of mind and your state after like one ingestion will be such that you will get out of whatever you're doing and go to the most important thing that needs to be done. It's like your priorities just immediately come top of mind. So that's something really cool about oxyrastam because it does elicit that effect of like wakefulness. You can tell that the stuff is working again, unlike the other racetams. So where I was using it was somewhere like 800 milligrams, maybe 700 milligrams. Honestly, I don't remember, but these are 750 milligram caps capsules and this is from Nootropics Depot. I would recommend you get this in the capsule form as the powder does not taste too good but this is what the pill looks like. It's kind of like the size like bigger than your nail. But overall effective stuff I would recommend that you do cycle off. I've made the mistake before of building like somewhat of a tolerance. I think there was a time when instead of getting capsules I had powders and I wasn't eyeballing it correctly. I was taking too much and I wasn't cycling off of it. I was think on it maybe six to seven weeks straight. And it was very clear that you can build a tolerance to this stuff and you'll find that it's working less because you won't notice it eliciting that wakefulness effect, which I discussed earlier. The next two tropic was anorastam. I was taking, I think 400 to 500 milligrams. This one doesn't taste too bad. So you can get it in either the capsule or the powder form. With anorastam, it's more noticeable than prastam, but probably not as noticeable as oxyrastam. I would say that if you have work that is somewhat similar to mine in that you're engaged in conversations the whole day, not through like text messages or emails, but just phone conversations or speaking to somebody face to face. That's where Anrastam is really helpful. With the Rastatams, all of them have this like nice ability to improve your verbal fluency. So like your word recall, you find yourself more sharper in conversations, you're, like not worrying about people being judgmental, you kind of needing to like fake it until you make it. Anrastam is super effective. I noticed when I took it like out of my stack, I was more concerned in conversations. I would have like a bit of anxiety. I wouldn't have much courage to introduce myself to people or that willingness to like get out of my comfort zone. That's where Anorast time is super helpful and I do not plan to take it out of my stack anytime soon. I still use it and I take some time cycling off but I wouldn't really think it's as necessary as some people think. Maybe something like five weeks on, one week off or maybe six weeks on, one week off. I can still find that the stuff's working and overall just a great nootropic. But if you're taking Anorast time and expecting it to have like physical benefits as far as like improving your body composition, maybe build more muscle, lose more fat. No, anorastam doesn't do too much that way. It probably doesn't even help improve your focus that much. But specifically for conversations, you just willing to extrovert, you stop exhibiting introverted behaviors or, or stop socially isolating yourself. Anorastam, great stuff. Pramorastam, whoa, this is a game changer. It's horribly expensive, but it's probably worth it if you again have a job like me where this stuff is kind of like an investment. Pramorastam, this is like one nootropic out of everything. In my line of work with Pramaras time, where I know it's helpful is like, let's say I have to be on the phones for two hours doing the same call over and over again, knowing that it's gonna be so boring and I have to clock watch, just wait till it's done. With Pramaras time, it's not really easier, but your like willpower is so much higher. You're just looking at it and just embracing the boredom and telling yourself boring equals money. Get through this work because the reward at the end is greater than whatever pain you have to go through right now. And it's more potent. There's some scientists that make the argument that Pramrastam is 30 times more potent than Prastam. I don't necessarily believe that and I don't think it does everything that Prastam does, but there's something to be said about you getting more from a smaller dose. Like this costed a hundred bucks for 180 capsules and they're only 300 milligrams each. So this is the size of them. Like it's almost half the size of that oxyracetam capsule, which I just showed you. Side effects, huh? maybe I'm just the wrong person to ask because I've been using this on and off for maybe like six years and yeah, I haven't had anything bad happen and I don't notice anything different in a bad way. I like the stuff a lot, thumbs up, and I do notice that it is far more effective when combining it with the other racetams. So now that we've talked about those four racetams, I just wanna remind you to be patient with them. You'll probably see them working after about three weeks. With oxyracetam, you may not notice that one working earlier. I'm somebody that just noticed it working within a few days as I felt like that alertness feel. But with the other three, then just be consistent with it. Don't miss a day and take it at least twice per day if you wanna see the effects sooner. And they are very effective. Just again, give it some time and make sure you have like objective measures. Of course, this stuff is easier to tell if you have like some sort of deadline or you're working longer days than most people. And I get this question on my videos probably every single day of can you mix the Rastatams? Like my answer is yes, but I'm not recommending you take anything. Of course, if you introduce any supplement to your nootropic stack, your supplement stack, then 
talk to your GP. Don't be asking me what you should be taking. As of course, I am in no position to be making any recommendations. I'm just somebody that talks about nootropics and my experience and people seem to find it helpful. And the last nootropic, which kind of is a racetam, kind of not depending on who you ask, would be Nupep. This stuff, uh, very, very potent as you can see. Like, look at the tub of this. This is like a 10 gram tub. It's like the size of maybe half of your palm. Very potent stuff. This is something I would not recommend you get in the powdered form because like you can't really eyeball it. And we're talking about doses like 10 milligrams, 20 milligrams. So that comes out to like being next to nothing. So how I typically like taking it is in the powdered form, just putting a little bit under my tongue. I've tried different forms. I've tried it in the capsule. I've also tried it like infused with alcohol, which they used to have in the drops. Also like a nasal spray, which you spray through your nose. It doesn't matter too much. If I was to compare Nupep to the other racetams or nootropic, it would probably be something like a combination of alpha GPC, a combination of oxyracetam and a combination of pramiracetam and that feel like that alertness effect um, in that you feel like that wakefulness effect that you get with oxyracetam you're able to work more hours like you feel with pramiracetam but you also feel like more in state you feel sharp like you get with alpha gpc as far as just ensuring like your batteries are fully charged that's where nupep is really really great but i would recommend that if you do choose to introduce it to your stack then take it similar to oxyracetam and that you're making sure that you do not take too much much and you do take breaks because Nupept is something maybe like three weeks on, one week off ideally. I will admit, I think it was 2013 or 2014 when I saw Nupept becoming very, very popular, but there was also not much information out there on the web that you can read about as far as like what dose was good and what dose you could take long term. And I was using way too much. Like there was some days and I could be wrong, but 80 milligrams to 100 milligrams of Nupept. I remember just getting the capsules and taking so much of it because I found it working and I didn't think there was any long long-term consequence. I didn't really feel anything bad from taking too much, but it was just so that I felt a little bit of a tolerance. And when I got off of Nupept, I wouldn't necessarily say I felt brain fog, but I just felt less sharp. Like my word recall was off, my verbal fluency was off. It was very clear just in, be in being in conversations with people. If I was like an eight out of 10 before, I would drop to maybe six out of 10, but it's not as severe as some people make it to be. It's nothing like the withdrawals you would get from something like Concerta or Adderall, like not even 10%. And find like, the lowest dose you can take but still notice a benefit on like if you're noticing it working with only five milligrams like that's cool just stick with that there's no need to really take anymore because like of the six nootropics i would say nupep is the one that i'm kind of the most concerned about as far as like long-term damage it could yield because again it's just more effective like if you followed my videos then you've probably heard me say before generally the stronger the nootropic is the stronger the side effects may be that's been my opinion, that's been my experience. There are some exceptions to that, like modafinil, which is very strong, but I don't notice the side effects being that severe. If you agree with that, then click the subscribe button and click the bell. Nupep, great stuff. I'll just give you a closer visual of what the powder form looks like. As you can see, it looks kind of like alpha GPC. It's pretty much tasteless, you know, kind of almost like tastes like BCAAs or like glutamine powder, if you've tried that before. Some of you may be surprised that like modafinil or phenylparacetam or some stronger supplements were not brought into this equation. Equation. Guys, I was not taking those things at all back then, and it was just because I hadn't yet been exposed to them with modafinil and phenylprostam. I was first introduced to them, like with my two favorite stronger nootropics, like um, modafinil, phenylprostam, even armodafinil. It was just that I was exposed to them later, and I'm giving you this video to let you know like what's actually worked for me. You may as well be surprised that like Bacopa and the adaptogens were not used in the supplement stack. I was using them here and there, but I just did not notice them like immediately helping my income. They're more kind of for long-term thinking. They're more to like decrease your stress levels. Uh, this nootropic stack will just naturally make you a bit overconfident. It will make you have a bigger ego. I remember just taking on like too many clients that I had the capacity for, too many clients, too many projects, thinking I had all the solutions. Um, my customer service dropped. I wasn't able to kind of think long term, wasn't able to plan as far as like delegate, hire people. And that's where the other adaptogens and other nootropics have really helped me out a lot because now I can find that I can work, make money, yet still know that I'm doing it in a sustainable fashion. Everything that I've talked about in this video and all my videos is just the truth. It was my experience and I realized, of course, there is the placebo effect. And I obviously understand that things like hard work, 
knowledge, your skills, your discipline, and your mindset are far more important. But when I started taking nootropics, I kind of already had the right kind of lifestyle habits. I was exercising seven days a week. I was tracking my macros. I was taking like my fish oil, my vitamin D, and I had all kinds of coaches. Hope you guys found this helpful. Be sure to drop a comment. Subscribe if you haven't. Give it a like. If you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one regarding anything, then do so on Patreon. I'll link the Patreon page as well as some links as far as nootropics that are great in the description box below. It's Michael Dougal. I hope you found the video helpful and I will look forward to seeing you all next time.